How's it going, Teal Boys? It is the end of our third season with Coastal. We unfortunately just lost our bowl game. That was a little bit disappointing. But we can go ahead and just right out the gates today, advance to the offseason. We'll be going through our offseason work here today. Really, really interesting recruiting stuff going on for us. A lot of guys that we really want to get. I'm not sure how uh, good of a chance we will have to pick them all up but uh i desperately want them all we might unlock mark wilson because we have an unlock available to us but we'll see we got a ton of xp uh at the end of the season i'm curious if that means that we're about to level up or not uh halfway there kind of interesting uh we did go nine and five didn't match our 10 win season from last year a solid 28 and 12 career record in our first three years here a little bit whack against the rivals two and two and five and four against top 25 teams so we need to work on that for next year but an a prestige now for brandon guna let's go ahead and take a look at some coaching carousel stuff today uh nick saban's retired the age of 71, Alabama is going to have to get a new head coach. Who is it that they're going to take? Uh, okay. Interesting. They take the Hawaii head coach. Blake Baker went 10 and 3 last year at Hawaii. He's got an A-plus prestige. Kind of runs a spread offense. He's from Tulane. Interesting decision there. Some other choices. Mac Brown has retired. Also at the age of 71, or Mac Brown and Nick Saban, the same age, was not aware of that. Uh, North Carolina is interested in us. We'll be turning down any offers that come our way. We have started to build this coastal program, so uh, anybody who thinks that they will be able to pick us up is going to be pretty sad about that. But they go with the Michigan offensive coordinator there. Now, we won't go through all of these, but we will check a few of these. Again, Florida State interested in picking us up, we are their first choice. Uh, but they hire Danny Gonzalez from Buffalo. James Franklin out of Penn State has been fired. That's kind of interesting. They offered us the job. That's weird that some of the other ones. Uh, we will stay with our... Well, let's just decline the offer. That way, I don't know. They, they don't think anything special of it. They pick up Rhett Lashley from Illinois. The head coach there moved for a better job. Some other interesting moves. Hawaii hires Billy Napier, who is doing really good things at Louisiana Lafayette. Uh, Arizona has hired Jeff Scott from USF. They fired Kevin Sumlin. Uh, he goes to Miami as the offensive coordinator. Pat Fitzgerald is fired from Northwestern, who picks up Tim Albin from Oklahoma. Mike Norvell has been hired at Rutgers as the head coach. Kind of an interesting one there. How about Washington State? They pick up James Franklin. So an interesting change there is Nick Rolovich did not last long. Nick went to Texas State. Stanford, after winning the national championship, has replaced their offensive and defensive coordinator. Uh, after both of those guys got poached to go be head coaches at, uh, what is that, Illinois and Louisiana Lafayette. So probably a step down there for them. But maybe they can make it stick. And I'm going to say this is good news. Thankfully for us, the only contract news with our team, with Coastal, is in our offensive coordinator, Bodie Reeder. He signed an extension, so we get to keep both of our coordinators which I think is really good because a lot of times we get stuck uh, where we just, you know, have a revolving door of coordinators. So we keep an 11, a level 11 offensive coordinator, which is very good. We can try to continue to up our blocking capabilities. We'll probably just keep going run blocking, max that out, and then start to do pass blocking until we can do our athlete and mathlete. Um, you know, if we could have replaced Chad Staggs with somebody better, that would have been nice. Uh, I think here we will probably up our road close so that we can get a little bit of block shedding. Maybe we'll try to stop the pass, but, um, you know, hopefully he levels up a couple times this year. And with the coaching changes set for next season, we get to go to the saddest part of the season. Our players leaving. Oh, we're going to lose a lot of talent this year. It's going to be pretty difficult. Um, some guys trying to transfer pl for playing time. Actually, a lot of them. There's actually a pretty solid chance that we can keep some of these guys around. Uh, Ryan Fornell, for example, I think is going to become uh, a pretty useful back for us. So we'll try to keep him around. But how about guys leaving before we worry about 
uh, transfers, players graduating. I don't know if we'll have anybody go to the draft, which is a little bit weird. Uh, Fred Payton, our backup quarterback, you know, he started a couple of games. He played in a couple of games. He was a good backup for us. Unfortunately, he was just, you know, a little bit older and about the same overall as Grayson McCall. So didn't quite make sense to play him over Grayson. We will definitely miss our cornerback in Jordan Morris. Only 80 overall, but probably one of the interception leaders on the team. Had only two this year. Six deflections, which for us typically means six dropped interceptions. Uh, he had three sacks on the year as well. Eight tackles for loss. Just uh, a pretty solid season for him. We'll lose our defensive tackle in Joel Hall. Joel had a, a bit of a setback year compared to last year. Only five tackles, two for loss and a sack. Compared to last year where he had 19, 12 for uh, a loss and nine sacks. So that's a little bit disappointing. No other stats for him there. You know, he was a decent core last year. Maybe struggled this year in the ACC, but we'll be sad to see him go. Probably our biggest loss of the year is going to be Reese White. Heisman winning running back 86 overall it's gonna be very hard to replace him had a career season this time out 370 attempts for almost 1500 yards had a, a career low on average yards per rush but i mean his increased production picked up for that over 100 yards a game 32 rushing touchdowns uh and that's you know saying a lot that his longest is 26 yards on the season so a lot of consistent running not a huge amount of big plays only three longer than 20 on the season uh seven broken tackles five fumbles the fumbles are pretty brutal including that one in the conference championship game but he pulls in the heisman the walter camp the walker and the best returner in his senior season uh he did some receiving stuff as well only one receiving touchdown but 171 yards it's the kick return that really stands out. 72 returns for 2,500 yards, three touchdowns. That is impressive. We'll lose a strong offensive captain as well in our right tackle, Cameron Stewart, as well as a pretty decent defensive tackle in Jared Clark. Um, actually, a surprisingly small graduating class this time around. I thought we were going to lose a lot more talent. This could be very beneficial. Uh, Reese, definitely the best player, but only 86 overall. Hopefully the guys that we bring in can step up to the task. And now let's worry about some uh, some playing time. Ryan Fornall is a running back that I think that we're going to use quite a bit this year. He's a power back. Um, and we are going to be making a change. We're going to be turning fatigue back on. I know a lot of people don't like having fatigue on because... You know, it gets a little bit weird near the end of the game. But I don't like the fact that basically Reese was the only running back to get carries. I, I would like to be able to, you know, see our, our starting running back get a little bit tired. And, you know, ha force us to think about when we sub guys in and allow our backups to get more carries. So Ryan Fornall, I think we'll get a good chance to play. 73 overall with training this season. It's going to look pretty well. He doesn't want to play I th or he doesn't want to stay. I think he's going to play in at least nine games. And uh, he's moving on. So we lose a uh, running back in Ryan Fornell. Hopefully that doesn't hurt. And he's going to NC State as well. So he's leaving for an in-conference opponent, potentially a rival of us. I don't necessarily need to keep Carlos Sanders. It would be nice to keep him around. I think he'll play a little bit. Persuasion chance is low. We'll say that you'll play in three games because I can't really guarantee you much more than that. And he just says deuces. That's a pretty alpha move right there. He's going to go to Florida International. Carlos, I'm sorry it didn't work out. Hopefully you get your chance there with the Golden Panthers. Maurice Dingle, another wide receiver. He wants to go to Rutgers. 69 overall with the name Dingle. 95 speed. Not the best acceleration, but he can really get up and go. I hope that we can keep him around. Very low persuasion chance. We're going to give him the sixth game. Uh, no, we'll, we'll promise. If we break this promise, it's going to hurt, but we'll guarantee that he plays a nine and he's going to go to Rutgers. So three transfers up, three transfers gone so far. And the next two, we don't necessarily want to keep or need to keep. Uh, Clayton Miller wants to go to Charlotte. We can't guarantee him a whole lot. He's, you know, 64 overall. So I guess we'll say you'll play in three games. He's going to say deuces as well. And Antoine Horton, are we going to lose five guys to transfer he wants to go to troy 
not a great player. Persuasion chance, again, very low. These guys must see the writing on the wall or something because they do not want to stick around. So we'll see. Uh, nope, he's going to head out as well. So we lose five guys to transfer and nine guys to graduation. So 14 gone with this class. I don't know if we'll be able to recruit that many guys. Well, let's see. Draft results. Yep, nobody went. Nobody was projected. Kind of surprising that we don't get anybody. How about uh, some big teams? Alabama has a couple of first rounders. Um, they're great right ends and right tackle. Gosh, they hit a nasty line. This is a lot of players going to one team. Auburn had a decent amount of guys go. That's going to be hard to replace the production there. Unsurprisingly, Clemson kind of mopped up there, losing a lot of wide receiver talent, though. Four first rounders, uh, just a ton of total guys, though. Florida had a decent amount of drafted players. The Georgia team that we played uh, had a decent amount, including George Pickens, who destroyed us quite a bit through the air, and uh, Zamir White, who destroyed us quite a bit on the ground. Both of them 99 overall, both of them going in the first round. Uh, an LSU team that made the playoffs has, again, a bunch of guys that get drafted. A lot of these teams that have this happen are pretty unsurprising. Last season's national champs, Miami, had nobody drafted after a pretty bad season. But another playoff team in Michigan has uh, some success there. Zach Charbonnet couldn't win the Heisman. Still goes in the first round, so I guess maybe a little bit better off than Reese White. 99 overall running back and a 99 overall middle linebacker gone for Michigan. Sam Howell for North Carolina does go in the first round. They lose uh, a decent amount of production, a lot of 90 overall players. That's a solid amount of draft picks. Ohio State, surprisingly low. I mean, some very solid-looking players. They just don't draft all that high. And Oklahoma, kind of similar situation, uh, just more players. And wow, this is big for Oregon. Three first-rounders, Kayvon Thibodeau, Mace Funa, and Mikael Wright all go in the first round. Uh, the Ducks are, you know, they've been struggling in this series. I don't know how they replace all of this production. Uh, wow, that's a lot of guys for them. You gotta be kidding me that Camden Lewis goes uh, in the fourth round and won an award for kicking. Our national champions in Stanford draft a, a decent amount of guys, including their punter and another Heisman candidate in the running back, Austin Jones. They don't lose a crazy amount of production, though. Tennessee somehow sneaks in and throws a bunch of guys into the NFL. Texas, a few fewer, but a decent amount of solid players. And Texas A&M, a pretty similar situation. USC gets a couple of first rounders, including Keaton Slovis, the quarterback. The final team that looked kind of decent on their draft was uh, Washington. First round or a third, fifth, sixth, seventh. That's not terrible. Uh, I think Wisconsin actually had a couple of guys. But yeah, nothing too crazy beyond what we've already shown. So maybe we can get some transfer requests of our own. We lost five guys, two transfers. Will any come to us? Don Riley, 78 overall freshman outside linebacker from LSU. You, you better believe that we're going to accept that. Don could be massive. I love that. He only had two tackles this past season, so just didn't get the opportunity to play on what I imagine was a pretty stacked LSU team. Uh, not necessarily the fastest linebacker, 75 speed, decent acceleration. His awareness is kind of dooky, but he can tackle. He can, he's got good play recognition, good block shedding pursue. His coverage is not the worst for a linebacker. He's pretty strong. He can hit. Yeah, I like that, especially for a freshman. We'll pick him up for sure. So that is useful. That will help. Uh, you know, bolster this class. We, you know, lost 14 guys. That will be one picked up. And now we can advance to the recruiting where we can see what we can get. This is going to be a little bit scary. So in recruiting battles with some incredibly important players, Greg Jones and Steven Muhammad could be massive wide receiver targets. And Michael May is listed as a wide receiver. But if we can pick him up, he is going to be our quarterback. Our team needs have been filled pretty much on uh, both sides of the ball, so we don't have to worry too much about that. And this is a little bit worrisome. Only six guys committed right now, so seven with the transfer. But we are 114th on our uh, recruiting class ranking, which is pretty devastating. 
I think Georgia or Oklahoma and Georgia up at the top. This is a Georgia team that we almost beat, but they're bringing in a lot of talent. 17 three stars is insane. Four five stars, I think, leads the country. Michigan has three. Tamu, Oklahoma, Ohio State, all with two. Can we manage to, to jump up in the rankings and have something good happen here in the offseason? I am very, very worried about this. Uh, nobody can lock us out at this point so we have one unlock left we might as well use it on mark wilson who knows maybe he decides that he wants to come play for us the 67 overall linebacker but what matters to us is what we can pick up out of uh, some very very good players on our board let's look at top schools greg jones the 81 overall wide receiver we're only 435 behind iowa state we know we want a gun for him put a five there is just a marker so that we can come back to it because michael may is the one that matters the most we are in the lead with the crazy athletes uh not a huge lead though and we don't want to get sniped by kent state cincinnati west virginia or purdue very very worried there serge mitchell could be a decent backup we could try to gun for him and, and outbid eastern michigan and ball states uh regardless we would love to have him on the team he's a great player he's very fast um, he could play multiple positions, so maybe he could be a target for Michael May through the passing game. Antonio Odom at defensive end would be nice to get. So would Adam Brown and Paul Moore. We have decent leads with a lot of these guys. Steven Muhammad is a solid wide receiver who's pretty quick. We're not worried about picking up Mike Harris, although he might commit anyways. He's not a fast quarterback, but he's got a great arm. Uh, we're the only team to offer him a scholarship. I think that we will get him to commit and we'll likely just sit him on the bench. Um, but just, yeah, look at all these guys. Michael White, I don't think that we're going to be able to get. Eric Rollins is a little bit far away. We have the lead with Paul Johnson. Again, the only team to offer him a scholarship, so we'll hope that he commits. Um, otherwise, it's pretty rough uh, as we just scroll down the list here. And, and as the further we go down, the less it matters. So we have, what, seven guys that I've marked as potential interests michael may far and away is the one that matters the most we're gonna start by putting 5,000 points towards him he could be our quarterback of the future that's the hope at least 80 overall redshirt him this year you know uh by the time grayson's gone he's looking really really solid really wish that we were a couple levels higher so that we could have uh you know 5,000 or something more points to put towards these guys um so what do we do I'm tempted to for sure go for guys like Antonio Odom and Paul Moore because having a great defensive line could be incredible. And the rest of these guys are just wide receivers. And it's like, if we're in the lead with Adam Brown, maybe we don't have to give him a whole lot. Um, I think that we were looking pretty solid with Steven Muhammad. At least we could get up there pretty quickly. And we're not too far on Greg Jones. So this is such a hard decision for me to make. I'm not sure where to go with these guys. It's I know that I'm going to make a wrong decision. I just hope that it isn't brutal and we don't lose out on a ton of our guys. And you know what? Actually, I forgot. Antonio Odom, the defensive end, and Paul Moore, the defensive tackle. Great players. Both Juco guys. I'm not as stoked about picking up Juco players. They're going to be with us for less time, and they're not going to have as good of a potential. So... I think that we're what we're going to do is really focus on uh, Greg Jones. We'll give him a couple thousand points. Let's just set him at uh, 2,500 for now. And you know what? I actually don't know if we have to give points to Antonio Odom or Adam Brown because we're the only teams to offer these two guys scholarships. Paul Moore is a little bit more of a battle. Stephen Muhammad is a bit of a battle. But, you know, if we don't have to battle with everybody, that's great news for us. Uh, maybe we go a little bit harder on Greg Jones and just expect that some of these guys commit. It could be the, the thing where like Antonio Odom just decides not to go anywhere or the same thing with Adam Brown. They're not super locked as it is. So it scares me to leave points on the board and potentially recruits on the board as well. But I think that we just got to go for a couple of guys and just expect everything else to fill out. So I'm going to bump up Greg Jones because I do not want to get beat by Iowa State for this guy. We're going to give him 4,000. And then we, I think we're going to give the rest to the guys who uh, look like they should be easy commits. But we just want to make sure that they're going to commit to us regardless. So 50 points to Odom just to try and guarantee things. Same thing with Adam Brown and Paul Moore. You know, we want to be like, hey, yeah, we sent them a text on uh, National Signing Day. 
Now, the question is, do we go with the rest of our points for Steven Muhammad, who were behind by 725 points? Or do we go for Serge Mitchell, who were way behind, and we can't even give that many points? I mean, I guess the answer is pretty clear there. Um, it would take a miracle to steal uh, Serge Mitchell away. So we'll go for Steven Muhammad. We'll give him the 850, and we'll hope that this is enough. I really hope I didn't screw this up. I... I'm not terrible with normal recruiting. It's the off-season recruiting that gets a little bit worrisome for me. Let's hope for the best. <laughs> I really don't feel confident. As long as we get Michael May, it's it's going to be a decent class. Let's go to National Signing Day. Oh, I'm so scared. Okay. It's not as good as it could have been, but we did get both Greg Jones and Michael May. Everybody else went elsewhere. I'm curious by how much we missed out on some of these guys. Um, did we literally only get those two players? Oh my goodness. That's pretty crazy. So two five-star prospects, two top 10 prospects. It says we signed 12 guys. I'm a little bit confused there. Let's go ahead and right off the bat, we'll just take the top classes. That'll answer the question for us. Yeah, eight two stars, five one stars. I think that means we got a lot of like walk-ons. Uh, but we got two five stars, 56 best class. Not top 50 like I'm wanting on these seasons, but not the end of the world either. Now it's time to really hurt. Okay, let's go and see how badly or how close we missed out. Uh, yep, 4,500 points for Surge Mitchell was going to be tough. Antonio Odom, 1,800 points. Maybe could have picked him up. Uh, how big of a lead did we have, actually? Greg Jones, we had over 1,000, 1,700 points there. Michael May, we had 2,400, so we could have saved 300 points or 3,000 points. And picked up another guy, but it just doesn't happen. 1,800 away on Adam Brown. On Paul Moore, it's 1,800. Stephen Muhammad, it's 19. Mike Harris, we had the lead. He just didn't commit, which is a shame. We offered him the scholarship. I wish that he would have come and played for us. It's just not going to be the case. Um, elsewhere, I don't think that we're super close on a lot of other guys. Let's see, though. What were our closest races? Uh, we missed out on Tim Smith. And I'm not sure we can see how good these players are, but we can just see that they have very close with a lot of players. Mark Wilson was that middle linebacker that we unlocked, I think, and we, we actually almost grabbed him, but uh, just a little bit too far off a few times. Listen, all that matters to me is that we have our quarterback of the future. We're going to redshirt him this year. By the time it's his senior season, I expect Michael May to be a world beater. There's just no way that he doesn't win the Heisman. He's got all the hype. The only thing that could stop him now is my user, which we know is terrible, or uh, some season-ending injuries. Oh my goodness. My recording got paused, so you guys missed out on every steps between uh, the recruiting and the preseason. Thankfully, it's not like a crazy amount of stuff, but you know, you missed seeing how much people trained up and uh, you know who we cut and where we move people to as well as we did change our skill trees. Uh, so this is what they look like now. We basically just took, uh, with Bodie Reader, our offensive coordinator, we took points away from Grayson to give them to the skill players that he would be working with. And then we went with more pass blocking instead of run blocking. And then here we just made sure that we had good visits because we'll plan on getting those early this season. Uh, and we went with the opener. So not a whole lot there. Let's go ahead and I can show you guys now what did change with our players? Uh, we'll start by redshirting, and we can see where people are. Grayson goes up to a 93. Uh, Bedgood's a 92. Cheney's a, a 91. Our line looks okay on both sides of the ball. We'll do our redshirting while we're in the middle of this. Michael Bay is going to sit this year again. We want him to be an absolute goat by the time his redshirt senior season comes around, so it'll allow him to uh, mature up this year. But running back-wise, all three of our running backs uh, that will be playing this year kind of started to look pretty impressive. They all trained up a similar amount. They're all very similar. Not super quick, but they're all very agile. They have a lot of acceleration. They have similar strength. So we've decided that we're kind of going to go by a running back by committee. I'm not sure how we'll change it. I might do formational subs and just be like, okay, you run out of the shotgun, you run out of the ace, that sort of deal. But we'll see on that one. JJ Barr got a little bit better. Wide receiver-wise, we look okay this year. Go ahead and sit Eric Perkins. But, uh, you know, nothing world-beatingly great. Marquise Jackson is looking pretty pretty solid, though. 87 overall with 97 speed and 93 acceleration is going to be great. Not good awareness for our wide receivers, though. Uh, at tight end, we're a little bit shallow, but Logan Malden and DJ Johnson should be able to hold down the fort. Not too worried about that. 
Uh, left tackle looks pretty solid. 80 overall there. Uh, 85 at left guard. We go to an 88 at center. I'm tempted to sit Robert Gray for a year. Um, I'm not so sure. It's a terrible idea. We are losing Dono Wilson, which means that we'll drop off quite a bit at center. So yeah, we're going to sit uh, Robert Gray so that we can get a little bit more depth for next year. And his backup this year isn't terrible. Right guard, we're at an 83. Right tackles, an 82. Both sides of the uh, line on defense are solid with the left end. Sidney McRae looking very good in the right end. Durham Finch looking good. He's backed up by a solid Devon Bomar. Defensive tackle also looks good. Decent depth. Um, we could, you know, want a little bit more. We'll sit Chris Moses this year because he's just never going to play in. Uh, you know, I wouldn't necessarily want him to. But our starters are looking good with a 91 and 87. The backups just won't be quite as good. Uh, linebacker core is mediocre at best. It's not great. It's not bad. Um, hopefully, they're just able to get the job done. And we did pick up a transfer in Don Riley, so we're unable to use him this year. So he'll sit uh, as a red shirt transfer. Hopefully, he's really good. And Kale Mack, he can continue to start his sophomore season at corner. Not much that we're going to change there. We don't have the depth to. Same thing at both sides of the line with the safety. Uh, and we can't do anything else. So there's our red shirting and a little overview as to what you missed in terms of how people have changed and what our thoughts are uh, in terms of depth chart strategy. So we have two players that are going to change their names. Michael May, our quarterback of the future, will be one of the two. Some of you guys might recognize this name. We've got Radon Randell. Uh, it turns out Michael May was a fake name that he gave the school to get it enrolled, but he's joined Coastal Carolina now. And let's go ahead and change his numbers. The number two available for us, it is. So we'll go ahead and stick him with that. The other player that's going to be changing names for us, I guess wrong birth certificate or something, is Greg Jones, who's freshman wide receiver. Greg will now be known as Malcolm Williams. And I think he's going to have a pretty big impact this year. Now, there is one more big coaching thing that we're doing this season. We were running a one back for the first three seasons. But with the play editor, I have gone ahead and I've made a playbook. We're calling it the teal book. It's based out of the spread. Uh, it's a little bit weird. It's not perfect. I will be changing it as the season goes on. We have the ace big, um, which is just kind of our main ace. You guys have seen it most likely already. We do have the Philly special in here. There's a couple more plays beyond just the Philly special that we can run out of this formation, uh, but it does exist. Uh, we have a couple of broken plays that I don't think we'll run, but they'll, they'll be in the playbook in case I feel like I get absolutely cheated. Um, we have two goal line forms, the normal and the twins over. Uh, how we use those, I'm not sure, but there wasn't a crazy amount of plays to add in. No eye form, but we do have the Maryland eye but two weird ones. <laughs> um, so if you have you were on our Twitch stream, we were making these formations. This one is called the Conga line. It's kind of out of the pistol, so it's not really an eye form. Uh, but we have the fullback and then the running back and then the other running back. So it's just a big straight line behind us. Uh, kind of interesting. And then look at this one, the Neutron Star. <laughs> we call it that because uh, the Neutron Star is like one of the most dense things in the universe, if not the most dense thing. Um, and if you can see, we have a fullback behind our quarterback, and in front of them is every other player in the formation, all in one pile. When you snap the ball, they all launch out like they're exploding. We'll never run these plays, but I just had to add them in, and maybe we'll use them uh, in our practice. We have a couple of shotgun formations that we'll run out of quite a bit. We'll run the five wide. The dip, which is just one that I've edited a little bit. It, this was the shotgun spread. Spread, you put on crackers, dip, you dip chips into. I, you know, it's kind of a pun. Uh, a couple of interesting plays that I've created in that formation. We have the empty tray. We have the heavy and the monster, which aren't going to be used a crazy amount. And they just have some weird uh, plays in there. Shotgun normal, of course. And then we have the quads trio, which just, you know, bunches everybody onto the right side of the uh, the formation there. And also has a couple of uh, plays that I've made. So a little bit interesting, you know, just wanted to add some fun. We have our strong eye, which is the green right strong slot. This one includes our play, the spider 2Y banana. 
Uh, curious to see how that one works in a game scenario. I think it'll actually be pretty strong finding the tight ends. Uh, and then we have the Wildcat Normal in Wing Trio in case we want to get a little bit of trickeration in there. So, the, you know, we might add some stuff in. If you think there's a formation that would work really well with this, please let me know. Uh, and we'll look at adding it. A lot of plays in the playbook, uh, but I'm curious to see how this evolves. But it's definitely going to be one that we have our hands on. More so than that one back that we were previously running. Well, let's go ahead and set our custom schedule now before we go into the recruiting. We are starting right now against Notre Dame. Um, we told it not to give us conference games to start the season. Can we reset this schedule? No. So we start against Notre Dame to open up the season. Not going to be an easy game. Then we go on the road to Pitt and then on the road to NC State who slaughtered us last year. UTEP is our first out-of-conference game. I'm going to take a bye there because otherwise it's just one hell of a stretch. Georgia Tech and then New Mexico. Man, the games that they gave us out of conference are not very good. So we'll be changing this. I want to play a Power 5 out of conference team. And we don't have a crazy amount of good options available to us. I do want to do one that's already been updated, if that makes sense. Just because I, I like to showcase the, uh, the uniforms that have already been put in. Maybe we do Texas A&M. Yeah, it's going to be a tough game. Uh, but we will go on the road to play Tamu in week six. So from there, we would play Virginia Tech on the road and then against Virginia. And they have us on the road at Miami. And then as another out-of-conference game, another uh, Power 5, we have uh, a road game to play against Minnesota. I'm totally fine to keep that. Uh, we play North Carolina at home and then Duke. And then we end the season with a bye. Let's not end the season with a bye. We could go and do an SEC move where we play a tune-up game. And you know what? Let's actually front load the schedule. We'll get uh, a couple of late buys, and that'll give us a buy before having to play North Carolina, who's the preseason number one. And we can play a big 12 team. Let's go with Baylor. We're going to have them come play us, though. Uh, we have a lot of tough road games already, so it is a one heck of an opening schedule to start this season. Uh, we don't get a bye until week 11. That's pretty crazy. So hopefully this goes okay for us. Uh, definitely worried about it. But hey, if we can have a good season here, if we can win these big games, we're going to be poised for a lot of greatness, I think, this season. So let's go ahead and get into the recruiting. Probably one of my favorite parts of playing this entire game is getting into the beginning of the season recruiting and seeing what crazy, you know, prospects we could pick up. I just like the idea of seeing all these new guys and just being able to think about, okay, maybe they're going to come play for us. Right off the bat, we only have one top 100 player interested in us. It's a four-star in Tyrone Hodges from Ocala, Florida. We are fifth on his board. Uh, does he like us a lot? He likes us a decent amount. I got to imagine proximity to home. He probably likes uh, UCF and uh, Florida and USF. Who else is on the board? Florida State. Yeah, he probably likes them a little bit more, but we'll definitely add him the 93rd ranked player out of the top 100, which isn't the best. A 4-6-2-40. Definitely a possession wide receiver, which we have a ton of, but could be very useful. And I would be crazy not to look at some of these top players. Uh, Andre Atkins, this athlete seems incredible. Uh, 4 2 6 40 is some ridiculous speed. Uh, he's not a quarterback, but he could definitely run with the ball. It looks like he could play some coverage, and he's fast as heck, but he doesn't like us. Fortunately, though, Aaron Jenkins, another athlete, 78 overall from Iowa, does like us. He's also pretty quick. Not the best acceleration, which worries me a little bit, but he can play some coverage, and if we look at the pitch info, an A and an A+, plus is the top two is very good for us. So let's go ahead and add him. I'd like to see some fast players added to, him, to uh, the board. Now let's look to see the strongest players. We'll see. Okay. Donald Singletary, the guard. He could like us. Um, I, We're going to add him as well. That's not terrible on the uh, pitch info. And how about by squat? Oh my gosh. 715 pounds for the middle linebacker, Jack Robinson. He doesn't like us though. Oh, that's a shame because he's incredible. This defensive tackle kind of likes us. He's from Utah. Uh... The program tradition is pretty rough, and I think that's where Bama, Auburn, and Florida would just easily beat us out. So I don't think we're going to have a great chance of picking some of these guys up. And as our last one added on here before I, I just leave you guys and fill the board and, and show you later, 
Nate Bell, free safety, number uh, one free safety in the country, 46th on the board. Good pitch up info. He's very quick. He's from Florida, which is, I don't know, maybe an advantage because we're in the vicinity and we have Florida maybe as a pipeline right now. We might have lost Florida, but um, I mean, he can tackle. His player recognition is bad. His coverage isn't all that great, but he can tackle. So maybe <laughs> he would be useful for us. Now we can take a look to see uh, our grades that we're getting this season. Before we go take a look at our team needs, Coach Prestige is up to an A, which is good. We're joining the ranks of some of the best guys, which is fantastic for us. Conference Prestige could be better. Uh, average rank, not too far off of that A- minus spot. Of course, the SEC is slaughtering. Average rank for the SEC is 11.8. What the heck is the top 10 going to look like this season? That is <laughs> absurd. Um, okay. Championship contender ratings down at a B. Hopefully that goes up. Stadium atmosphere is a B minus. We're on a three game home winning streak. Hoping to keep that alive this year. Coach stability should be going up because we've kept our coordinators. In fact, we've had our defensive coordinator, Chad Staggs, for longer than we've been at the school, which is great. Everything else is going to be slow to uh, go and improve, but I think things are improving. So. Just hoping that we can look decent in the eyes of some of these recruits pretty soon. Team needs wise, uh, we have six seniors on offense and 10 on defense, 16 total. So a lot of guys needs wise, we need a middle linebacker. Uh, we need a free safety and we need a strong safety. I'm going to look to go a little bit more on that. I think we're okay defensive line wise. We've got a lot of sophomores and juniors. The secondary, our linebacker core, and of course the, uh, let's see, I wanted good tight ends, and I would love to replace offensive line. We are losing three offensive linemen this year, so uh, I think that should be our focus, and maybe a good running back, because we have four juniors on the roster. All right, well, we found a lot of really good-looking players. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure if any of them will be good. There was a lot of, like, safeties that seemed like they wanted to play for us. So a lot of those to scout. We're starting with a kicker. I figured if we have a chance to pick up a great kicker, we might as well. Joe Rogers, 95 kick power right off the bat. We could be bombing field goals. I would love that. Move down to the strong safety. Ira Daniel, 83 overall. I imagine he goes down. Still an 82 overall. Uh, Logan Smith at strong safety goes down to a 78. That's more than acceptable. Nate Bell, the free safety. Drops to a 74. We've got Aaron Jenkins, who is a speed demon, I believe. Uh, what can he do for us? Good coverage. 96 speed, 89 acceleration. Better than I expected. And he goes up to an 80 overall. That's a good-looking athlete. A guard now in Donald Singletary. This guy looked like a monster. He is 79 overall with a 82 pass and an 84 run block. Continuing with the strong safety trend, we have two in a row. Jermaine Henry drops to a 74 overall. Still doesn't look terrible. And Kyle Edwards at 76 goes up to a 79. That's a pretty quick guy. Decent coverage there. I could use maybe a little bit more strength, but 83 tackles good. How about a corner this time? Mike Shelby at 76 overall goes up to a 77. Again, looks pretty solid. Not the best coverage that we've seen. Uh, but everything else is okay. Okay, time for some linemen. Spencer Co. the guard, goes up to an 80. This dude... Wait a second. Things aren't right. This is not... Okay, now apparently this is uh, Mike Shelby. I don't know who he had just looked at. I guess it was Ben Cooper. I gotta refresh this because Mike Shelby's very quick and looks a lot better. 89 man coverage, 88 zone. All right, now maybe things will work properly. This time it's the guard Spencer Go. I thought for a second he was incredibly quick. He's got great acceleration, uh, but not the speed that I was thinking he had for a second. Still uh, good pass blocking. Not the best run blocker. How about the other guard, Colin Blankenship? More all-around guy. A little bit slower, but uh, just a better blocker, I think, generally. Another safety in Danny Wilson. He goes down. Doesn't look the best. Pretty bad coverage, honestly. Um, 69 zone. We would like to see that better. He can tackle decently. All right, a center. Andrew Sutton goes down. Still, though, I mean, as long as the guys that we pick up are in the 70s, I'm fine with that. But if we can get some, you know, a handful of these guys in the mid to high 70s, that would be incredible. We're finding so many true talents this time around. I'm loving it. Uh, I like that this safety has an 80 zone coverage, and he's pretty quick, and he's got 80 tackle. Brandon Washington could be solid. And let's go ahead and refresh again. 
And we can look at this athlete, Kellen Bell, this time around. Not very quick, not good coverage. I imagine, yeah, 81 power moves. He's going to be like a defensive end. 81 acceleration, probably. How about the fullback? Had to throw one on 74 overall. Joe Burton is a bust. <laughs> well, that's a shame. His blocking seems honestly pretty solid still, so maybe we try to pick him up. It is always nice to have a fullback on the roster so that we're not, like, trying to convert a running back. Um, and, you know, the fullback dive is always nice to have. In our final scout, we've got a defensive tackle here in Antonio McBride. He is a 73. He goes up to a 77. Not a whole lot of gems or busts this uh, go around, but still finding a lot of guys moving up quite a bit. He seems just like a solid defensive tackle. Good good tackling, good play recognition. Uh, his power moves are good. His finesse moves and block shedding could use some work, but I'm fine with that. So we've got some solid players on the board and just going through, I think that uh, the guys who had interest in us, we should be, you know, able to potentially pick them up. I do need to be worried about some weekly bonus points. Some of these guys, it's looked like uh, we should be able to fight pretty well, like um, for sure Joe Rogers, the kicker, but I think Mike Shelby, we should be right in there. Uh, good looking with Logan Smith and Anthony Moore. As long as we have decent bonus points, the fact that we have the full kitchen sink now is really, really good. So that's pretty solid for us. Um, and, you know, we still have those pipelines in like Georgia and Florida for this season. So uh, honestly, yeah, just looking at bonus points, it seems like we've done a decent job throwing guys on who want to come play for us or at least, you know, wouldn't mind it. So let's just hope that uh, we can do good on our recruiting this season. So we have finished all of our off-season and pre-season stuff. Sorry that you guys missed out on a little bit of it. Uh, I guess the recording paused at some point. And I just didn't notice that until I was simming into the preseason. But I don't think that you missed out on uh, a crazy amount. So hopefully it's not too big of a deal. Let's go ahead now that we've gone through it all. Let's hit the start season button. And we can advance to the regular season to end this episode. Two preseason All-Americans and six All-Conference preseason players give us a little bit of free XP heading into the start of the season. Where we'll have to play a number 17 Notre Dame. They're an A-plus team. We're a B-plus team. I think we were we, we went up. We were like a B-minus or a B last year. So we got a nice boost in A-minus offense and B-plus defense. Hopefully that's good. Uh, we're not favored to win this first game. I don't expect to win this first game. But a good tester for us to begin this season. Unfortunately, this game is going to have to wait until next episode. So if you've made it this far in this one, I want to say thank you so much for watching. It means a ton that you would stick around for an awesome, uh, fun off-season video. Uh, and if you're not already subscribed and you want to be notified when new Teal Boys videos drop, please feel free to subscribe. And while you're down there, head to the description where you'll find links to my Twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster. There's also links for my Twitter and our community Discord as well. That being said, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Goonmaster. You guys are the Teal Boys. And wherever you are, have a good night. Have a good morning. And we'll see you later. Adios.